you are here this morning, you want to say, Pastor, this encounter is a waste if I don't make it right with Jesus. I'm not going to wait till I'm done preaching before I do the altar call. This is the time to accept it. Inside, outside, online, you want to make your way back to Jesus. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus. You are struggling with one sin and you need help. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand. Above your head. Come. Come. Come forward. I can't wait till I'm done preaching. This is the time. Can you help this man up? Hello, sir. Help him up. Okay. Come. Come. You want to make it right with Jesus? Come. Come, keep coming. In the gallery, everywhere, come, come. Everything this time is the best. Just get, get him a chair and put him on the chair. This time is the best time to say yes to Jesus. Come. Come, keep coming. I surrender, I surrender to everything I give, everything, everything I give, I give to you, I surrender. What you are saying to God tonight is, Lord, this anointing will not be a waste, no. I'm handing over everything to you. You called for a meeting. I have come. We told you nothing. You are still there. Run here. Run here. Run here. Run here. We told you nothing. We told you nothing. We told you nothing. Give myself away. I give myself away. So you, so you can use me. Lord, I give myself away. I give myself away. Outside, outside, find your way here. I believe there is a contact online for those who want to accept Jesus online. There should be a contact to send for those online. Just send your full name and your phone number to that contact that is displayed on your screen right now. I believe a contact will be displayed on their screen. Send your full name and number to that number. Your full name and phone number. Today is the 14th day of the 10th month in the year 2023. A day you will never forget in your life. Lift up your two hands. Say, Jesus. Say it a meaning to Lord Jesus. Thank you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for rising and falling. I'm sorry for messing you up. Forgive me. I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I know you shed your blood for the remissions of my sin. And I know your blood can never be a waste. I believe you as my Lord. Please, clean me from all unrighteousness. Forgive my iniquities. Give me grace to stay pure. As a vessel unto honor. 
and I vow not to return back by your help. I receive the Holy Spirit and I stay in love with you. In Jesus' name I pray. You are the most important aspect of this video because on the day of coronation, you are the fruits of coronation. The Lord decided to coronate us on the 14th of October 2023. Many of you, when you become the great man of God, you will say, I know the day it fell. You will tell them 14, 10, 2023, Uniben, Indoor Sport Hall. You will say it. Around 12, between 12 o'clock and 12, 19, it fell. You will remember. You won't forget. But I need your names because mm -hmm. Pastor and Mama would like to pray with you and I would also like to pray with you. Is anybody? Okay. So, uh, in five minutes, you'll be back into the auditorium. You have made a decision. We need to pray for you because the best of man is still a man or with intercession there is supply of the spirit. Follow these pastors and handsome men and women of God over there and write your name and phone number for me and we'll be back. God bless you. Please follow them. So please, let's be fast with it. Can we get more ends to join them so that we can be fast with it? So that we can come, they can come back and hear the few things I want to share. We need more ends to join them so that they can be very fast. They can be very fast. Maybe some of the ushers can also join them so that we can do it in a very fast way and they come back. I want to appreciate my brother and my sister, Pastor Oyiz and Awili, for inviting me to Benefa Conference this year. The Lord told me I'll be coming last year. But when the Lord told you, you won't say, Hello, bros. God, tell me, say, Now, maybe it could be your guest minister. You have just break the code of relationship. So I kept quiet. So when you called me, that, you know, Pastor did not invite me, he just cornered me. Hey, Peter, we need for our conference. And you'll be guest minister. Write the day down like that. Write them down. I said, Yes, sir. You they come, you don't hear, you don't clear. Oh. <laughs> you will think a man is busy until his brother calls. That's why, as you grow in ministry, build relationships. Can I shock you? Ministry thrives more relationship than the anointing. You can be anointed and you don't have a relationship with me, you won't come. Are you with me? You can ask pastors. That's why people like to invite people they know, not people that they hear about. Because you want to be sure you know the work of that person with the Lord. You want to be sure you know the secret place of the person. You want to be sure that you, you know the root of the person. You want to be sure that the person is not just preaching and living another kind of life. You want to be sure that you know this person. So people have attended meetings whereby after the meeting they began to fornicate. Why? Because the man of God came with anointing and lost. So as he was ministering in power, he was flowing in lust. There was a transference of lust. So you ask the boy, how did you start? He said, one man lay hands on me. And from that day, a guy came to me, he said, pastor, from the day one man of God lay hands on me, I couldn't control my sexual appetite. That's why you must be careful who lay hands on you. You must be careful who speaks over your life. You must be careful. So brother, sister, Thank you very much for the great work you are doing in Voltage, for the great work you are doing with Refresh, for the great work you are doing with Windows, for the great work you are doing at Beneath Fire Conference. Thank you. And thank you for spoiling me since I came. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will retaliate. I will retaliate. It will be mega. Thank you. Thank you.
you know, it's easier for men of God to invite their superiors and honor them. But when you invite your colleague, your brother, it's always like, he go understand. But when those did not do, he go understand. They treated me like a man of God. Thank you. If you call me tomorrow, I will come back. <laughs> Thank you. And all the pastors in the house, thank you for coming. Thank you. We're so excited. You know, Pastor, I've been looking at you. Only when he mentioned H O T R S, I said, ah, I, I know this face. Thank you for coming. Thank you, all the men of God. We celebrate you. Are you ready? Somebody saying, What have we been doing? <laughs> but I have a short message to preach because God has moved already. Other call has been done. I'll just share it briefly and I'm out of here. Have you been blessed by this conference? By the time we are done, you will not be the same person that came. Let me celebrate Pastor Isaac for that wonderful message. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who is a witness? Who is a witness? By the way, we celebrate my ministerial minister, Allah. I celebrate you. And I bring greetings from my beautiful wife, PMO, and the mother of my two nations. I celebrate you for staying there for me always. You know, the pastor has a pastor. Not necessarily his father and the Lord. The person that pastors the pastor after the service. If you don't get it, forget it about it. Who is a witness? A witness is a person who sees an event. A witness is a person who gives testimony about an event that is aware of. A witness is a person who sees an event, who knows an event, who perceives an event, and gives a testimony about his experience or encounter. He sees an event, he knows about an event, he understands, he perceives an event, and then gives his testimony about his encounter or experience. Chapter 1, verse 8. Act chapter 1, verse 8. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost have come upon you, and ye shall be what? Witnesses unto me. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost have come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Now, so it shows here that the purpose of the Holy Ghost is not to turn us to celebrities. You know, there are young people today who boast about their Holy Ghost. There are people that boast about how deep their tongue is. Say your, your tongue. Your tongue cannot travel. Fele friendos, kefedi kasi se friendos. That one is not. Tell you, ondo bobo, karungu bobo. That's when you, you have tongues. Tell this one you are speaking, it's not, it's not concentrated tongues. So there are people today who pride themselves in their tongues. There are people today who pride themselves in their Holy Ghost. But the curriculum of the Holy Ghost is that it turns ordinary men to witnesses. And ye shall receive power. Somebody shall have power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses. The purpose of power is to witness. The Holy Ghost is for witnessing. Why is the custodian of the information we need for witnessing? Show me John 15, 26 to 27. John 15, 26 to 27. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of the... John, John, John 15. Is the custodian of the information that we need for witnessing. John 15, not Job. John 15. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send from the Father, the Spirit of truth, 
who proceed from the Father, he will testify of me. That is, he will witness about me. Next verse. And ye also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will bear witness to you. You will now bear witness to the people. We need the Holy Ghost for witness because it's the custodian of the information needed for witnessing. Can I shock you? Your story at best can inspire people. It is his story that can change people. My story at best can inspire. His story, that which is our history, is the one that can change people. Testimony about how God blessed you at best can motivate. It is the testimony of Jesus that can save his soul. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of the information needed for witnessing. Pastor, what is the title of your message? The title of my message is The Species Called Witness. The Species Called Witness. As a man that has a background in biology, a species is a set of animals or plants, members which have dissimilar characteristics to each other, which can breed with each other. A species is a set of animals or plant members of which have similar characteristics to each other and can breed with each other. What is the theme of this conference? I can't hear you. He didn't say witness. It is witnesses. So is a species. Ask your neighbor. Say, are you a member of my species? Say, are you part of us? I said, a species is a group of plants or animals that have similar characteristics and can breed together. So, let's do a little biology. Human being. We have domain. Uketa. We have kingdom. Animalia. We have phylum. Codata. We have class. Mammalia. We have order. Primate. We have family. Hominidae. We have genus Homo. We have species Homo sapiens. Species Homo sapiens. So let me shock you. Are you aware that monkey and gorilla belong to the same family as human being? The kingdom stated by scientists we belong to the same kingdom. Kingdom Animalia. We belong to the same family called Data. In fact, you'll be shocked that we belong to the same order, primates. When you talk about chimpanzee, apes, we belong to the same order, primates. Can your daughter bring Abe as her husband? But despite the fact that we belong to the same order, we are never the same species. Gorilla is not Homo sapiens. Monkey is not Homo sapiens. Only human beings are Homo sapiens. But that is science because I'm not an animal. Are you an animal? And God made man in his own image. Then God created animal and said, Man, have dominion over the fishes of this. Have you? So, scientists call you animal, but I'm not animal. But let's believe that for scientific explanation, despite the fact that gorilla is in the other primate, gorilla is no homo sapiens. So, it is homo sapiens that marry homo sapiens. Are you with me? It is homo sapiens that mate with homo sapiens. Now, homo sapiens talk to homo sapiens. Gorilla talk to gorilla. Chimpanzee talk to chimpanzee. Monkey, talk to monkey. How many of you can talk to gorilla here? You know the language of gorilla. Except you used to go to a meeting in the night. But I'm speaking. You can hear me. Because we belong to the same species. Who are witnesses? People of the same species. They have similar characteristics. They belong to... 
I am not talking of a witness. I'm speaking about witnesses. So it's a group thing because at best, I can do my best. But one we chase a thousand, two we put ten thousand to flight. What Pastor Isaac is talking about unity and what they spoke about love yesterday, that is the idea. One man cannot take a city. That is why the team is witnesses. It is a combination of species. Tell your neighbor, say, I need you. Say, neighbor, two of us can put the devil to flight. Say, I will chase a thousand. Two of us can chase ten thousand. Now, what is the mathematics? If one man is one thousand, the other man should be how many? It should be what? But in God's calculation, one plus one equals to ten thousand. How? Who is supplying nine thousand? It doesn't mean you are better than me. When we come together, there is a supply from above. You give your 1,000, I give my 1,000, help supply the 8,000. Are you with me? But the 8,000 can never come until we come together. When we chase the 1,000, if two of us, one day myself and my mistress were at the airport, and I told them about evangelism, so he, he, he was looking at me. There was a guest sitting next to me. He was looking at me. He knew I wanted to evangelize. He began to pray in tongues. I moved closer to the girl. He looked at me, began to speak in tongues. Interceding for the heart of the girl. The girl was waiting for her boyfriend that would take her home. I don't know what they want to do at home. But I know they were going somewhere. So I moved close to her. He was speaking in tongues. I began to preach Jesus to her. He continued speaking in tongues. I began to speak, preach to her. After a while, she stood up. The guy was sitting next to her, but the guy was already angry that somebody is engaging the girl. But my PA was using his spirit to control that one. So that one cannot do anything. Can you see? One, we chase a thousand. Two, we put ten thousand to flight. I was preaching. He was praying. Why did God send them out two by two? He could have sent them one by one. Even at the gate, beautiful. He said, Peter and John, they were going. Why are you trying to be alone? Why are you trying to be alone? So, as I finished preaching, the girl stood up. She didn't accept the gospel, but she left the boy angrily and said, I'm not going with you again. So the girl left. The guy looked at me and he took me to and said, Hobby. The girl didn't say she accepted Jesus. I'm not the converter. I'm to sow a seed. She might sleep and see Jesus in her dream. But do you know what I was happy about? Despite the fact that she didn't say yes to my gospel, she didn't follow the boy for the operation of the afternoon. The boy left angrily, the girl left angrily. Two of us combined together. If I'm the only one, two of them can face me. Hello, ma. Do you have a phone with touch light? Yes, on your touch. Lift it up. Because you are the only one owning it, do you know what I will do? Yes, give me that phone. It's easier to kill your light if you are the only one. Everybody on your touch light. Which one will I kill now? Lift it up. 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 So where, where am I starting from? Okay, if I try to kill this one, before I finish, this one is still there. Then I move to this one. Then, hallelujah. Then I move to this one. Then I move to this one. Then I move to this one. Which one will I kill? No, tell me. Which one will I kill? If you are the only one, they can point your light. If we are many, nobody is the target. If we are many, nobody is the target. If you are the only one, you are the target. Are you with me? Don't be the only one that has fire in your family. They can quench it easily. But as God save you, get your brother, get your sister, get your neighbors. If you are the only one born again in your room, they can quench it. But if your bunkie is also born again, the next person is also born again. In your faculty, everybody, when you appear, there are many. Who will you stop? Somebody said, We are witnesses. We are together. Do you know what happened? There was one day. 
Daniel interpreted the dream of the king. And the king said, come, I will make you the prime minister. Then I said, excuse me, sir. I have three friends. Their names are called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Can you also make them governors with me? Me, I will stay at the gates. The king agreed. What is he saying? If I'm the only one, if I talk, they will silence me. But if we talk together, they are afraid of four people. Ay, 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 ay. If one chase a thousand, two chase ten thousand, three chase hundred thousand, four chase one million, geometric progression, who will stop us? Why are you the only one saved in your streets? Someone shout error. You are the only one that knows about the program happening in the city. Shame on you, sir. You gather people, put them inside bus. Let's go and contact this fire. If I'm the only one, they can kill us. They can... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's easy to target one person. It's not easy to target multitude. We are a species. A people with the same characteristics. A people with the same characteristics. They look at us, they don't know who to face. So who do you want to face? Ella? They couldn't even identify Jesus. They had to kiss him to know him. Peter, James, John, they look like him so much that Judas had to kiss him for them to know him. He said, whosoever I kiss, meaning even though he was in their midst, they didn't know him. Everybody looked like him. You meet Peter, you meet Jesus. You meet Timothy, you meet Jesus. You meet Bartholomew, you meet Jesus. You meet Nathaniel, you meet Jesus. You meet Philip, you meet Jesus. You meet Thaddeus, you meet Jesus. Who is the one? The person I kiss. So Judas came. Judas came. Look at me, look at me, look at me. And he picked one guy and kissed a hand. That is the one. How come you are the only one that is different? Listen. Everybody turn on that touch light again and lift it off. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Above your head. But you know what? Everybody in this center, put down your own. Yes, others lift up their own. Some of you here, put down your own. <laughs> Some of you lift it up. Some of you, yes. Some of you here, put down your own. Lift up your own. Is the room dark? In case there are people that don't have light, we are not still affected because we are many. Some people don't have light. We are not affected. Why? We are many. We are witnesses. We are witnesses. We are together. Why is God doing beneath fire conference? That witnesses will be many. That's why on the day of Pentecost, they have to do it. 3,000 join. If you ate large things, you are not born again. When it comes to God, it has to be mega. Don't say we have to be small. The more we are, the better for the kingdom. The more witnesses we have in every sphere of influence, the better for the kingdom. You send somebody to politics, the guy became unbeliever before he came out. He's the only one in the government house. He goes for a meeting, they give him alcohol. He goes for a meeting, they give him cigarettes. He goes for a meeting, they put him to court. He's the only one. But in case there are five of them together, going together, say, my brother, don't fall, don't fall. I hold your hand. Please come. Sir, come, come, come. Join us. Sir, join us. Join us. Sir. So, in case, in case I want to collect, bring water for me. Bring water for me. In case I want to collect, good luck. Let me collect. See, see, I want to call and say, brother, you're not going to call it today. Let me call and say, you're not going to call it today. What are you going to call it today? We are many. We are many. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. But if I'm the only one, give me the good. Nobody, they look at me. I bet, I bet, I bet. I will ask for repentance tomorrow. But because, brother, you know if you do this to you. You know if you do this to you. And then these brothers will not go and announce online, our brother is drinking. They are there to say, bros, we are together. You are not falling. They collected from, in case, maybe I, I went alone and I collected it and I took one zip. 
when they find me, what would they do? Bros, call us. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. You are a target when you are the only when one. You are alone. You are a target. When you are alone, you are a target. You become stoppable. 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 Hey, we are many. We are many. We are unstoppable. 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 Hey! Shut da 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 da. Can you pray, Father? Send witnesses to our city. Pray, 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 God. Rest many, rest many, rest many, rest many, Lord, rest many. Show me Proverbs 14 28. Listen, please sit down. Bring mercy to a Yimba United. Sunshine stars will defeat them. Do you know why? Everybody will be marking mercy. He's the only star player. Bring C. Orlando to Abba FC. Uniben part two star. Uniben part two FC. Maybe uh, economics football team of Uniben. They will defeat Abba United. Only see Ronaldo. All you need to do, four people mark him. One match his leg. Then one match his second leg. Then collect the ball. But imagine a team. Proverbs 14, 28, show me. Proverbs 14, 28. After this meeting, prioritize evangelism. It's not for your sake. Don't do it because you feel like we should do it and increase our church. It's that the kingdom of God is advanced when we have many. Proverbs 14, 28. Show me. Any challenge? Hey, but let's read. In the multitude of people, the king is honored. But in the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. Look at this scripture. When we are many, God is honored. When we are few, we are the ones that suffer. It's not God. When we are many, God is happy. When we are few, we are the ones that suffer it. You are the one that will be disenfranchised because you are few. Do you know why politicians play away with the church? Do you know why they carry their tickets? What is your number out of 200 million? You better go back and evangelize. Weaknesses enter everywhere. The more we are, the king is honored. The less we are, we are the ones that suffer it. God is looking, is a species, a group of people having the same characteristics. The Lord wants us to have certain characteristics in bulk as a group. Can we colonize a whole campus? Can we colonize a whole city? And let me shock you. Mention the top men of God. They are, you can count them one to ten. Then the government can set them up. But imagine in every city there is one voice. Every city. If we're a branch pastor of a mission, is the voice over a city. Ah, am I making sense to you? Every campus, there are voices. Then who do you want to stop? Who do you, who do you want to stop? Anywhere you get to, voices are there. 
say will be many. So when you hear me shout will be many, say shall be full. It's not because I like numbers. It's because I know the more we are, the better for the kingdom. The more we are, the better our capacity. What are the similar characteristics of this species God witness? The distinct characteristics of this group of people. When you find them, what are the things you will see when you meet them? Number one, Malinda Pilato Asisa. They have witnessed the suffering of their Savior. You know, Pastor was talking about long suffering yesterday. Many of you don't like that kind of topic. Let me show you a scripture. He, he paraphrased the scripture. He didn't read it very well. John 16, 33. Let me show you. Pastor just mentioned it. He didn't, you didn't see what? John 16, 33. Show me that scripture. I have spoken to you that in, everybody read now. In me. What is it there? What is me? He's not sure. What is me? He's not sure. Then what is the next one? In the war. Peace. Tribulation. He said, but I have overcome the world. But, ah! You can't escape it. Can I get another version? Like, uh, like CPT message amplified. Uh, show me. Do you have it? Can I have it? Is it possible? Or who can read? Okay. Everybody, let's read. Everybody, let's read. And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For, read now, in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrow. Who is speaking? Shout it. Show me message version. Do you have it? <laughs> message version. Everybody, let's read. I have told you all this so that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. Why? In this godless world. <laughs> eh? What did he say? You will continue to experience difficulty, but take heart. <laughs> Is this in your Bible? Okay, show me amplified. I will stop on that one. No, I will do an empty after the one to go. I have told you this thing so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world, you will have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous. Be confident, be undaunted. Be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. This one, if we explain it, what you will experience, you will have tribulation, you will have distress, you will have suffering. Somebody say, God forbid. Is the God that forbid that I say this one? Show me NLT. Is the God that we forbid that I send this one to you? Hey, but let's read this one. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on it, you will have peace. But take art. Witnesses are people that have experienced the suffering of the person they are witnessing. And they see it as a privilege to suffer with him. It's a privilege to go for evangelism and be sorted. It's a privilege to preach on Twitter and be dragged. You want to drag me? bring generator. It's a privilege to be harassed. It's a privilege to be embarrassed for the Savior. It's a privilege to follow God, yet you are hungry. That you use all your money to serve God, and yet God has not done anything. Do you know what God did for me? He asked me for my car one time. 
so I taught that. Ah, I don't know who taught me MMM strategy. That when you give God, He will give you. So I gave God my car. I was expecting God to, to shock me. One month, He didn't show up. Trekking continued. Second month, trekking. Third month, trekking. Fourth month, trekking. I said, God, change the wine mini. <laughs> One day, they now invited me to Alakuko. You know Alakuko in Lagos? If you know Lagos. So they invited me as guests in this. They said, Pastor, we have organized keke na pep that will return you to Agege. So that from Agege, you will get a boss. <laughs> what did you organize? Shout it now. Yeah. Say it a minute. <laughs> so, after the service, and I collected the keke na pep with all humility. As we were going home from service, rain began to fall. You know in Lagos, there are potholes in certain roads. And when rain is falling, the water will look as if the road is flat. So while we are going, the keke na pep break down inside the rain. And the keke say, ah, bros, I beg, let me push him. <laughs> Guest minister. So I came out with all humility, singing, pushing. As we are pushing. You know, I told you there is pothole, but rain has made it look like a flat road. As we pushed, Keke stopped. Me too, I stopped inside the water. My leg full of water. And I look up say, ah, guest minister. God say, we're done. It's a privilege to suffer for God. I'm not saying suffering sickness, oh, because he took stripes for our sickness. If he wanted us sick, he wouldn't go on the cross. So you can't be sick and say, I'm suffering for God. You are foolish. He took stripes for that one. Are you with me? By his stripes, you were healed. But when you face distress and tribulation and persecution, it's part of the package. Many of you like protocol. You saw Peter was coming, protocol was following me. I didn't start like this. When I became a pastor, I finished school. The Lord told me to go into full-time ministry. Full-time ministry. How will I survive? He said, I'm committed and capable and responsible. So they posted me to VI. I had two trousers, one shirt, two blazer, many times. So I will wear blue, blue and black. I will wear blue trousers today, white shirt, one tie, one blazer. Next week Sunday, black trousers, white shirt, another tie, another blazer. The third week, the blue trousers, the white shirt, another tie, no blazer. The last week, the black trouser, the white shirt, the another tie with the first blazer. After a while, the shirt cut on the neck. I now cut it according to bishop collar. I said, I don't like tie again. <laughs> I said, I don't like tie. I like bishop collar. No, the bishop collar. The tie don't, the shirt don't break. I cut them, cut them. Will you endure affliction as a good soldier of Christ? Weeping may endure for the night, Let's but joy is coming in the morning. Wait! You don't know how soon the money is. Pastor was sharing yesterday about his suffering. It's part of the package. You want to blow. God asked me, son, what do you want? Do you want to blow or I should blow into you? I said, God, explain. He said, if you have a balloon and it's already big because they have blown into it. Leave it, hang it. What will happen? It will begin to deflate by itself. But if you pick a balloon, what will happen? It will begin to get big. He said, should I blow into you? Can be one year. Can be another three years. Can be another five years. You won't get to capacity until the end. But many people have finished before they start. Yoruba will say, Oti ton koto ton. He has finished before he started the journey. I said, Lord, blow into me. I don't want to blow. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until the perfect day. He didn't shine bright or brightest. God is a God of process. God doesn't throw men up. God lifts men up. In the kingdom, we don't go, we grow. 
Somebody shall process. That process will take you suffering. I saw in the life of Peter process. The guy was a fisherman. The Lord told him, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. He followed God. First miracle. He preached. 3,000 joined. Second one, 5,000. Third one, they couldn't count. Can you see how God is lifting him? First miracle, a man by the beautiful gate. Silver and gold, I have none. Such as I have, I give. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The guy began to walk. Next day, you know what happened? After a while, his shadow began to eat the sick. He didn't start with shadow. He started with Odin. The guy was not standing up. What did Peter do? Don't disgrace my notion. Stand up. But a time came. Peter did not need to touch anybody. He said, arrange them. Arrange them. He will begin to walk. He began to walk. He began to walk. He began to walk. His shadow began to heal. He wasn't holding anybody. But he didn't start with shadow. He started with holding the guy. Now a time came that when somebody died, he said, go and call Peter. He said, have you sent for Peter? They know no matter how the person died, will come back. If Peter shows up, he didn't start like that. Can God lift you? Why are you trying to blow when God can blow into you? Witnesses, they have witnessed the suffering of their father and they are willing to be part of it. Archbishop suffered in this city. He suffered in this country. You know the glory, you wait the groaning. Pastor Adebo, he suffered, he was hungry. He suffered, but you don't want to suffer. Am I marketing suffering for you? Sorry, it's part of the package. My wife married me with 100 naira in my account. 100 naira. How much? She married the anointing, not the money. So one day she told me, he said, you are, he said she asked me for money. I said, you know, I'm not working in oil company. He said, no, we're working in oil company. Anointing company. Can you pray one prayer? I receive grace to follow process. Ah, pray, 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 pray. I receive grace. Amen. Ask Pastor Oiz and Pastor Awili. They didn't start programming a hall like this. They didn't have light and screen at the beginning. Now, many of you go and borrow money to I borrow money to do program. You will not pay debt after the program. Ask them, did they start with light and screen? Can God also lift you? Where is your track record? Show me your lion, show me your bear before you face Goliath. First Peter 5 1. Show me that scripture. First Peter 5 1. Witnesses, they are witnesses of the suffering of their maker. They are excited to follow the process to be with him. See. The elders who are among you are exalted. I am a fellow elder. And what? A witness of the suffering of Christ. What happened? And also, the partaker of the glory that we what? That will be revealed. The glory has not been revealed yet. It will be revealed. I witness the suffering, but I'm a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Many suffering I have seen. Glory I'm waiting. And yet, the guy was stable. There are days you'll be hungry, my brother. There are days you'll be slapped for preaching. There are days you'll be locked in the prison for preaching. Some of us will die for preaching. The people that brought the gospel to us, some of them, many of them died. They died for the gospel. Many of them were killed by mosquitoes. Who preached the gospel of comfort to us? Who preach? Who do us like this? Bishop Boydipo said he will be preaching no mic. He will be sweating like Christmas goat. Preach. He said he will drive his B2 from Kaduna, B2, from Kaduna to this place. Many of them will be jumping buses to ensure the gospel is preached. But they invite you. You don't even have record of your life. Music minister. You say, I, uh, before I come, I would like to you have to talk to my manager and fill this form. 
the, the least money I can collect to the glory of God is 500,000 naira because of my backup and all this. I'm not saying you, you just started ministry last year. Because of Instagram followers. Angels never they follow you. There are days you will go and preach, you will come back. Say, ah, God, now you call me. And God will say, it's a training. I went to preach, I traveled down, sir. After service, they gave me banana and granite as honorarium. And I, I called them, I said nothing. He said, man, we know you are a big man of God, you don't need anything. The Lord will bless oh you. God. I went to Abuja to preach. One guy invited me. He told me he has booked my flight or something. I agreed, I went there. After the service, he said, Pastor, send me your account number. I sent the account number. I went to the airport, only to discover my name is not on the flight. I called his number. He switched off the phone. I had to start borrowing money at the airport. I have some money. I look, bros, give me something. Bros, give me this one. To ensure that I meet up with that flight to go back to Lagos. I called him. Why did you do like this for me? He didn't pick my call. After two years, he called me and said, the sex is I did that to you. Ministry, have closed. I said, we close. <laughs> did you pay me? I had to, I had to. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. I have to pray for him. I, I don't suffer. I went to preach in one place, man. They put me in Brotel. You know Brotel? You enter like this. When you enter like this, you will not enter. You will not enter. And I enter the room. I say, where's my food? You know those mama that used to sell food for outside on the road, inside foil paper? No, mama put up. The one that used to sell on expressway that would use nylon to cover the food. They now went to buy food inside foil paper. You know meat, you know liver. They cut them like this. Two, 20, 20 naira. They put on the food. Food for guest minister. Then, and I said, I want food. They now went to buy mala, watermelon. They have cut into four. You know they used to put nylon to seal it? They would cut it like this, put nylon. They now bring one. Guest minister. And the Lord is watching my reaction. So if you see that they use police escort to carry you, it's not today. Oh. But what will be your own story? They are witnesses. The Holy Ghost is not a call to celebrity. It's a call to stewardship. The anointing is for servants, not for celebrities. We are not celebrities. Say after me, say we are not celebrities. Say we are stewards. There are days you will cry. There are, as a witness, there are days you will sorrow. There are days that we ask you, where is your God? And many of you are in that face now. God says, I should come and strengthen you. Don't be discouraged. God called you. The suffering is a sign that you are called. You will soon come out. God is faithful. Endure it is for a while. Ah, pastor, I'm about to give up. Calm down. Don't give up. Don't give, give up on God. Because he will be God. He said, Have they slapped you before? Have they insulted you before? Because you went to preach. Have they messed you up before because you want to preach? Have your parents rejected you because you wanted to preach? Have people called you failure? A man called me and said, you are doing full-time ministry. You don't have what to do with your life? I said, no, sir. I have a calling. He said, which calling? Your mates are working. You are saying you are doing full-time ministry. I said, sir, I'm not a dullard. I didn't fail in school. He said, get out of here. Do something with your life on serious point. I have a calling. I'm not a failure in life. And that's why what is pushing many of you to make a statement. You are trying to prove a point. God said to me, I'm not proving anything to anybody. It might take time. The vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end, it will speak. Give it up on it. 
Your calling is still intact. Your calling is still intact. Your calling is still intact. After this meeting, go back to your money cry. Many of you pastors are sent to campus ministry, but because there's no honorarium on campus, you stopped. Go back. Go back. Go back. God said you will reap what you sow, not where you sow. Sometimes the people that will bless you are not around you. The people that have blessed me the most are not my church members. I can tell you, but God is a rewarder. There are days you'll be hungry because you have to give your all to God. There are days God will say, empty your accounts, give me a sacrifice. Then after you are empty, you begin to look for food to eat. And God will do as if he didn't see you. If he can turn his back on Jesus on the cross so that he can carry the sin of the world, he can do anything to you to get you to fulfill purpose. What God told me one day, he said, son, I can do anything to reach my son, including hurting him. That was shocked. There are days that God will intentionally allow you to pass through. It's a passing through for your breakthrough. Don't see your bend as your end. It's just a bend. And you pray for grace to suffer with the Lord. Pray. Lord, I receive grace. Lord, I receive grace. Lord, I receive grace. Amen. Number two. These people, they are witnesses of his life-changing power in their lives. They are witnesses of his life-changing power in their lives. They are not just witnesses of suffering. They are witnesses of his life-changing power in their lives. Ephesians 3, 10 to 12. They are witnesses of his life-changing power in their lives. Ephesians 3, 10 to 12. How many of you love Mama Windows? You love her? Do you know how she started this ministry? I won't tell you the story. Do you know how she entered the fullness of her calling? Sometimes God will allow you to pass through pain to enter your gain. But we will not just tell you about the suffering. We will tell you how God changed our story. They are witnesses of his life-changing power. You can see pastor or he's today. You see screen, you see light, you see it everywhere packed. It wasn't always packed at the beginning. God pruned them. They passed through pain and disappointment. But now you are seeing the glory. But we won't only tell you the suffering. We will also tell you how our lives changed. These are days that people will call you pastor. We are inviting you. They will send the money before you come. By the time you see the honorarium, you have to increase what you want to preach. Maybe they can send this one. Ah, Lord. You will go and fast and pray and increase prayer. But there were days that they were giving you watermelon, banana and granite as honorarium. But these are the days you go for a program, somebody will give you a car after the program. We have also seen the change of destiny. These are the days where you don't know how money enters your accounts, just see money. Somebody just call you, look, Pastor, God said I should give you my car. Pastor, let's God said I should give you this land. And you are like, no, so if I come and share that story with anyone I suffered, I'm a wicked man of God. Witnesses, witness of the life changing power. So the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to you by the church. To the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Next verse. For according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Next verse. In whom we have put this. And access with confidence through faith in him. Now we are bold. But there was a time they were hiding. There was a time they were ashamed. There was a time they were afraid. But when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they became bold. They were with Jesus for three years. Yet they were afraid. They ran into a corner. They shook it out. 
But when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they became bold. Now we have access. We have boldness. We have confidence. Silver and gold I have none, such as I have. At what point can you say that one? You know something has dropped. Remember there was a time they brought a guy that was possessed. They couldn't do anything. Jesus said, oh, you faithless generation. How long will I be with you? He said, this can go at not. I said, by fasting and prayer. But the same people say, silver and gold we have none, such as we are. There was a time they couldn't do anything. Now they can do something. They are witnesses of his life-changing power. They come and tell you, I was sick. Jesus healed me. Now I came to pray for you to be healed. They come to tell you I was broke. Jesus prospered me. Now I've come to tell you about the power of Jesus. When they witness, they witness to people about the life-changing power of God in their lives. How God has changed their character. How God, I, I tell you many times, I was a chronic addicted, addicted to masturbation and pornography. But Jesus came to me. He rushed me, delivered me. Now I've seen many people delivered from masturbation. I even wrote a book on it. But there was a time I was struggling. I am a witness of his life-changing power. Witnesses go out and say, guy, 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 I was struggling with immorality before until Jesus came. Hey, sis, 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 I was struggling with my academics until Jesus came. Hey, there was a time I was struggling, I was down, nothing was working until God came. They are witnesses of the life-changing power of God in their life. Pastor, I am not called. If you have a story, you have a calling. something in your life then you have a calling have you been around disgrace and God show up then you have a calling have you almost failed an exam but God showed up then you have a calling are you caught out to disappointment and God showed up then you have a calling witnesses don't keep quiet that's what they, they are testifying they don't keep quiet about what God has done. Anything God has done for you is your message to that person. You tell them, Jesus did this for me. He can do it for you. They are witnesses of his life-changing power. Number one, they are witnesses of his suffering. Number two, they are witnesses of his life-changing power. How God has transformed their lives. Number three, because of our time, They are people that demonstrate among the people the power of his salvation. Witnesses demonstrate among the people the power of his salvation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 18. They demonstrate among the people the power of his salvation. Therefore, if any man being Christ is a new creation, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He said, now we have the ministry of reconciliation. Our work is now to reconcile others back to God. They witness, they demonstrate among the people the power of his salvation. When they see a sinner, they won't want a sinner to remain a sinner. They tell the sinner, no, no, no. I was there before, but Jesus saved me. He can save you too. They don't only totally tell people stories of, I was poor, now I'm rich. They tell them, not just I'm rich, I'm saved. Not just I passed my exam, but Jesus saved my soul. They demonstrate among the people the power of his salvation. Anyone that's a witness has a calling to evangelize. Somebody saying, Pastor, but I don't have a pulpit. You don't need a pulpit. Your work is that you are the pulpit. Pulpit, pulling men from the pit. You are the pulpit. You pull men from the pit of hell. They demonstrate the salvation of God. Ask your neighbor, where are your converts? Who have you converted to Jesus? Pastor, I don't have a platform. I can't preach. You don't need to preach. When you remove P from preach, it remains what? When you remove R from reach, it remains what? Preaching is preached to reach each. If you can reach each, you are preached. Just one classmate, one roommate, who is an unbeliever, witness to her about how your life has changed. She knows how you used to be sick, but now you are no longer sick. That's the starting point. Then don't stop there. Witness to her how God saved you. How you were in ignorance and in sin until Jesus came to say no. Ah, yeah. I 
child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Many people are afraid to tell their friends they are converted. They package it. We are not the same anymore. I have changed. I am a child of God. I am My life has changed. Jesus has saved me. Jesus has snatched me from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. I am now saved. Oh, I am a child of God. Are you a child of God? A child of God. Listen, I can't pretend to be saved. I don't blend. Light don't blend. It shines. How come your roommates don't know you are saved? How come your parents don't know you are saved? I'm a witness of his salvation. I tell the story of how he saved me. At 17, I had 21 girlfriends. Hallelujah. Pastor looked up and looked at me again. To be sure I'm still the one speaking. Me, Okuku, she almost destroyed my life. Not, not a hono, not a hono. There's one me, Okuku, Ah, I was 17. My pastor told me that I saw a vision. That they are sending a lady to destroy my ministry and destiny. That I should be killed. But they don't answer him. I went for maybe IT or something in one place. And I lead praises in church that Sunday. And the lady said to me, uh, Hey, why? What's up? I like the way you let some. I said, can I come to your house? And I went to her house. Me, Okuku Cheche. As I went to her house, the journey began. How old was I? 17. My parents are pastors. The journey continued for seven days. Don't ask me about the journey. But it was a journey. After that experience, I kept seeing the old woman in my dream every night. My son, your first love has finished the work. It's now my turn to finish. Come and sleep with me. I said, Mama, I'm not doing, Mama, I'm not doing. So I kept sleeping with like an eight year old man every night for almost three months. I changed my boxers every night. Because the woman will come and sleep with me. Very old. I couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't tell my parents. I couldn't tell them I was in trouble. I couldn't tell anybody. Then when she's done, I will masturbate. It's like they were using remote control to control my life. I knew my life was going. I knew I was finished already. And one day, another lady called me. He said, hello, hey, why? What's up? I said, I'm fine. He said, come to my town. Come and have sex with me. I said, I'm coming. So I traveled from where I was to go and have sex with that girl. When I got there, I entered the room and I became impotent. She touched me, touched me, touched me. My man, man was not rising. Nothing was working. We tried everything. I said, I'm sorry. You can see. And as I stood up, she started chanting incantations on me. I'm not telling you African magic. I'm telling you my story. I was 17 years old. I gave my life to Christ at the age of 18. I became impotent. Of course, you know I'm not impotent now. I have two girls. And they look like me. <laughs> my life was going out of my life. I couldn't, I couldn't, I was in trouble. I became addicted to masturbation at 17 that if there was no Vaseline, I would use anointing oil. Yes. They, they desired to finish. Devil saw today. He saw today. He, they wanted to finish my calling. But you know what? It was God that made me impotent because of his mercy. Sometimes you are a mess. God still show up with mercy. That 
being impotent was the mercy of God. Because that night when I slept, the whole woman came again. I said, I'm not doing, I'm not doing. She said, you must do. And she turned and she became the girl that called me to have sex with her. So that sex was to finalize my destiny. So the whole woman I've been sleeping with was the girl that called me. That was my story. I called my pastor. Pastor, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. He said, pray, pray. And I was in my room, and Jesus came. He said, how long will you continue in this your mess? I didn't answer out that call. Jesus saved me. I gave my life to Christ in that room. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I started evangelism straight. I began to tell my story. I began to tell my story. And I don't stop with my story. I tell them, Jesus saved me. I tell them, Jesus saved me. Jesus delivered me. Look at me today. Do you know how many people have been saved? Last year alone, I won, I think, maybe over 20,000 souls that I saw in my uh, record of the number of souls that I've won for God. The devil saw that. The devil saw that. The devil saw that. We are not just witness of how we are poor and now we are now rich. We are witnesses of how we are, we are rot in hell and he saved us. Testimony of your breakthrough is not enough. Breakthrough is not salvation. You can't be telling me how God gave you a car when you have not told me how he rescued you from hell. If all your pastor does is to tell you, see, oh, I was in UK yesterday, I was in China yesterday, God has lifted me and he doesn't tell you about going to hell, that pastor is not legit. We are witnesses of his salvation. I knew how dirty I was until Jesus came for me. I knew how terrible my life was. I was a slave to masturbation, a slave to pornography. I, I, I was a slave until Jesus showed up in my life. Today I'm preaching the gospel everywhere, terrorizing kingdom of darkness. I wouldn't have been able to do. Do you know the joy in my heart for being saved? There is joy in salvation. There is joy in salvation. We are witnesses of that joy. How can you see your fellow neighbor in sin, going to hell, and you keep quiet? Sinners in the hand of the angry God. But that God is not a merciful God. Looking for a way to get them rescued. Don't keep quiet. You see a sinner, don't keep quiet. I was flying to Egypt one day and a lady sat next to me. I couldn't help it. I, I started speaking to her about Jesus and she broke down. Told me all her past stories and sometimes they don't even answer your call or accept Jesus but you have sown a seed. The Holy Ghost will finish the work. Say, Father, give me grace to be a witness of your salvation. Can you talk to God? Talk to God. Talk to God. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let me just say two more points and I'm out of here. Are you blessed? This species they are witnesses of their new life and new thinking pattern. They witness their new life. They witness their new thinking pattern. They witness that they are now a changed person. They don't just tell you now, I was a sinner, I was a sinner now, I'm, I'm saved. They tell you, my mind is now renewed. They'd come and explain to you that things have changed. We did go club together before. Our story have changed. Now, I'm no longer drunk with wine. Where in essence, but I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. The problem in the body of Christ is accept Jesus, but we don't tell them what they become. It doesn't stop at utter call. We have to move to, you, you know if you dress like this again, oh. Before you they expose everything we won't buy. Now, sister, you will cover small. Look at me. My life has changed. My behavior has changed. The guy that used to insult everybody becomes gentle. Ah, bros, you know they fight again. Ah, Jesus changed my character. Jesus changed my character. Ha! Ah, I used to be aggressive and angry. But now. Of the spirit, 
meekness. They said the guy used to be proud. He's now meek. He's now gentle. He's now temperate. He now has self-control. He is now good. He's now kind. They are witnesses of a changed life. Galatians 5.22 You see witnesses. You can't be preaching and you are still arrogant. Your, me, your character is your loudest message. When I gave my life to Christ, there was a change. All my girlfriends knew I've changed. One called me, hey, why, what's up? I said, we know they do again, no? Goodbye, works. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye, players of sin. I'm staying no longer with you. I made up my life to grow God's way for the rest of my life. I, 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 I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. You were the guy fighting. Suddenly they see that you know they fight again. It's now gentle. Something must change. They are witnesses of a changed behavior. The guy used to be lousy. Suddenly he becomes quiet. I made up my mind to follow God's way. For the rest of my life, I made up my mind. I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I made up my mind. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I have made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. When I remember some of the things I was doing before, and now I cannot do them again. Like Jesus, you try. Jesus, you try. Now only you beat collect this thing. I was drinking. The first day I started, it was four bottles of three, three. To start, they won four bottles. Today, I don't take alcohol to be high. I take the most high. Most high, and I'm high. Instead of taking four bottles, I take four hours. I do do calabar one day. The same way my eyes turn red. It's turning red now. Hallelujah. Turning red against the devil. Change your behavior. Do you know what shocks me? Christians, they don't change. The brother was in the world chasing girls. He now came to church. Comes up. After service on Sunday. Sister came. Oh. You see, they enjoyed the thing. Switch place of doing it, nothing has changed. You were doing it legit before, now you are doing it on that G. Oh, glory! Oh, my sister, my sister. oh, God. Oh, oh, glory, glory. I can see the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Where else? There must be a change behavior. Do you know why I'm saying all these things? You know, you would think I should talk about the witness with power. The reason why our gospel is weak is that our life is corrupt. Our gospel is weak because our life is corrupt. A brother was asking me, that is he wrong to kiss? Christian brother, tongue speaking. I said, it's not wrong. If Matthew 5, 28 says, if you look at the woman who lost after her, you have committed adultery. If looking is sin, how much more leap on leap? Are you with me? There are four levels of fornication. Number one is tinkery. As a man tinkered in his heart, so is he. Number two is called lucre. You are looking. Oh. Let's get, get back home. Oh my God. Number three is called libri. Libri. Number four is called torture. Number four is called dukri. That one. What's number one? Tinkery. What's number two? Lucre. What's number three? Lippery. What's number four? Torture. What's number five? Dukri. Anyone you do is fornication. You are born again, but you see you do vulgar, vulgar languages. Nothing has changed. The same language you are using in the world, you are using in the church. Nothing has changed. You are not a witness of a changed behavior. 
Now you have witnessed his salvation. He saved you, I agree. But salvation doesn't end with, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. It ends with a change of character. Matthew 5, 13. Matthew 5, 13. Ye are the salt of the world. You are the salt of the earth. If a salt loses savour, how shall it be seasoned? It is therefore good for nothing. It's to be thrown out and trampled under feet by men. You are the light of the world. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. God wants to, through you, diffuse the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ in every place. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. God wants to, through you, diffuse the fragrance of Christ. But what are you diffusing? Fragrance of flesh. A witness and witnesses of changed behavior. Pastor, the way you do before, now you do now. Something never changed. Mama, ask the men of God. Daddy Gio told us that he was very proud. Yes. Daddy Gio told us. I was shocked. I thought he was humble from birth. He said, God made him humble. I said, how? Oh. He said, he likes to prove. He said, when he became Gio on his table, you see, Reverend Dr. E. A. Adeboye, PhD, General Vasi, are very big on the table. So as soon as you enter, you will see it. He said, I was not to I'm not saying tattoos are wrong, go. I'm just, he was sharing his own experience with us, how God worked on him. Very big plaque. He said, when he turned 40, God came to him. God showed him two parabola, one going up, one going down. He said, pick one. He said, he picked the damn parabola. God said, become my pastor. Leave all the titles. He said, from today, I will start lifting you. He finished Lekki 98. Seven million people gathered. God asked him to draw a man on the seashore. And God asked him to wipe it. The day you ever think you are the one, I will wipe you. You see the man just come, you are greater than the greatest. You are mightier than the... You, you think he doesn't know what he's doing. He's reminding himself that you are the one doing it, not me. There is nothing special about me. That's why he doesn't stress himself. He doesn't jump. He just stayed there and miracles and mind it. How can a man be that great and be humble? I went to greet Daddy Gio. He stood up to greet me. Welcome, sir. How are you, sir? Sir, to who? The day I, call, I received the call, hello, sir. Ah, who? It wasn't like that. There was a change of behavior. Will you also change? I would never be the same. My life has changed. I will never, I will never, never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life has changed. I will never. to change about you. You that don't wake up to help anybody in the house. You are born again. You won't say, I have to travel. The first thing to do is to sweep. You will be shocked that Jesus is concerned about sweeping. Everything about me changed. My conversation changed. My character changed. Begin to live in the fruit of the spirit. 
the work of flesh die. I begin to live in the fruit of the spirit. I walk in love. I walk in faith. I walk in meekness, temperance, long suffering, goodness, kindness. Somebody that used to be very stingy will become very generous. They say she used to be very stingy. Jesus have changed my life. Mary Mangaline was a woman with seven demons. Yet she was the one using her hair to clean the feet of Jesus. She was part of the certain women in Luke chapter 8 taking care of Jesus. But yet she was a former demon. Everything has to change. Listen, and the last one as I close. After they have witnessed his suffering, they have witnessed his salvation power, they have witnessed his life-changing experience, they have witness of change of behavior, they can now witness of his power. Witnesses are witness of supernatural power. Mark chapter 16 verse 20. Mark 16 from verse 17 to 20. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they take deadly things, they won't them. They will lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Next verse. Verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received unto heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father. Next one, see what happened. See what happened. Witnesses. And they went out and preached everywhere. What did God do? The Lord confirming the war with signs. Follow him. Show me Acts 19. 10, 11, 12. After you have experienced this thing, you now witness his power. Power is not the first to manifest. You must follow the protocol. And this continued for two years so that all that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord, of Jesus. Both Jews and Greek. Next verse. Now. Somebody say now. After Paul have fulfilled the change of character. It was a, it was a criminal who was like a bookworm. He got saved. What happened? He experienced the suffering of the Lord. They beat him. They did everything to him. What happened next? The guy experienced a change of life. Everything about him changed. Change of behavior. A, a persecutor became a Christian, an apostle. Then what happened? The Bible says, Asia heard the gospel in two years because of Paul. Your faculty have not heard. You have been here for four years. Show me verse 10 again. Verse 10 again. For two years. And this continued for two years so that all who dwelt in a whole continent heard the word of the Lord Jesus. Both Jews and Greek. See how God responded. Verse 11. Now, God worked on usual miracles by the hands of Paul. After he fulfilled the criteria, I know you want to heal the sick. Go back and start. You can't heal the sick with your bad character. You can't raise the dead with malice. You can't make the lame walk with bitterness. You can't take a city with envy. You can't win a territory with backbiting. God doesn't manage vessels. He purifies vessels. No matter how you sing and chant and pray in the Holy Ghost, if you live in iniquity, you will not be anointed above your fellows. Until you fulfill the criteria of witnesses, God cannot use you. Rise upon your faith. One song. Oh, you might not be able to sing Yoruba song, but I will sing it and I will pray. Lo me I want you to cry to God, Father, walk on me and commission me as a witness to my generation. Father, walk on me. Walk on me and commission me as a witness to my generation. Walk on me and commission me. Walk on me. And commission me as a witness to my generation. Walk on me. And commission me. Walk on my character. Walk on my attitude. Walk on my behavior. And commission me with power. 
Commission me with power. Commission me with power. Pray, 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 pray. 